Well, welcome to Creative Toolbox, a show brought to you by the ServiceNow Developer Program, where we demo new ServiceNow features for every developer's toolbox. I'm Christy, Senior Developer Advocate, and today I'm joined by one of our amazing product managers to talk about a new feature that arrived for Playbooks in Yokohama, Playbook Localization. But before we get started, let's do some quick intros. Taylor? All right. Uh, my name is Taylor Burrows. I am a principal inbound product manager on the workflow automation team. I specifically work with playbooks and I'm excited to talk to you guys today about translating playbooks and uh, internationalization. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so very much, Taylor. And I'm just going to turn it right back over to you so you can uh, jump right into the content. <laughs> All right. So as mentioned, today we're going to be talking about playbook translation and internationalization. This really helps us create that seamless user experience when you have teams that are going to be using a single playbook in multiple regions. So just want to throw up this safe harbor notice here before we get started. This may contain some forward-looking uh, roadmap items. So just wanted to throw up a safe harbor. This is confidential and we don't want to necessarily make important decisions based off of that those roadmap items. Um, today, again, we're going to be doing some introductions. We're going to do an overview of playbooks and when to use them and why translation is useful. I'll show you a quick demo and then again, show you the roadmap and where we're going to be taking this over the next couple of releases. All of this to say, our purpose here at ServiceNow is to make the world a better place uh, and make the world work better for everyone. And so what better way to do that to make sure that your workflow is localized and translated in a way that your entire team across your organization can utilize. Why would you use playbooks though? If you've never used this before and it's not a tool that you are familiar with, we wanna use a playbook when we have a complex process um, that we need to use across maybe many different teams um, or provide a really structured way through a, that complex process. This also allows you to customize that end user experience so that it's, um, it's a way for an end user to interact with that business process in a way that provides that real-time guidance to an end user so that they can follow that process easily and it's easy to adopt. And now you can even translate that playbook or that process into different languages when you're surfacing it for different users. Um, so localization in general helps you to translate a playbook into various languages during runtime. So while that end user is interacting with the uh, real-time guidance uh, through the process. And why would you translate? Uh, bef before this was available, uh, you used to have to create different versions of a playbook. So you'd have to have a playbook English version, a playbook French version, a playbook Spanish version. And now you can create one single playbook and then just translate the different UI elements within that playbook. Um, obviously, you can see that this would be very beneficial for multinational companies or teams that want to use a single onboarding playbook, for example, or process for their global workforce, um, maybe with some uh, different uh, of languages offered when a user goes to actually use that playbook. So how do we actually turn this on and start using it? It's very simple um, in terms of enabling localization for your playbooks. We do need to make sure that you're on 27.1 or a later version and make sure that you enable the following sys properties. I'll go over this in the demo just to kind of show you where this is. Um, but if you need to take a look at what those sys properties are, because they are long, you can pause right here and um, find those within your sys properties table. Once enabled, uh, it's as simple as creating a playbook and activating it. And then what will happen is with this feature enabled, it's going to essentially take our existing pattern of generating entries within sys UI messages and then utilizing the get message API to retrieve the correct translation when a user goes to essentially invoke that playbook. Once the playbook is activated, we will take all of the different UI elements such as the playbook name, the descriptions of different activities, the names of the activities, all the different labels and translate those into translated messages translated messages within the process definition table. Once those translated mes messages are available within the process definition table, 
a, t a user from your team can go in and translate them into other languages that need to be supported. So in this little GIF here, you can see we have an instructional activity um, that is being translated into Spanish. It's as simple as clicking into that, translating the actual message portion into the available language, and then saving that um, to be used later. If a user has their language set in Spanish now, when they go to pull up this particular activity, um, it will be translated into Spanish. There are some important nuances and gotchas uh, that I just wanna highlight here because um, it is a little bit different and uh, don't want anybody to get tripped up when trying to utilize this for the first time. Translated data will be available for anything that's visible within the playbook. So things that are included are gonna be the playbook information, the stage information and the activity labels and all of the related descriptions. Things that will be dis excluded are data pill values, uh, flow automation inputs, record data, and app statuses. So things like in progress or some of the other statuses that you might see um, across uh, the playbook at any time. The source language is also an important nuance because whatever you are creating the, are authoring the playbook in uh, will be the language that we will identify when creating the UI messages in the process definition table. So for example, if you create a playbook and your instance is in English, then we will assume that the, the UI messages and phrases used are going to be in English, even if you were to translate them while creating the playbook. So you want to make sure that you're translating within the process definition table and not directly within the playbook itself, unless you're um, doing it in the desired language. And lastly, your available languages are going to depend on which translation plugins you have installed in your instance. And I'll show you and walk through that today as well when we do the demo. So now I'm going to show you what I am talking about. Um, and so we are going to demo today everything I went over in the slides. Um, first, we're going to start off in system properties. The one thing we just want to check here is that these two properties are set to true. In this case, you can see this one's false. All I would do is click into it and set that um, to true. Just want to make sure everybody knew how to get here to system properties. One of the other nuances that I covered was making sure that you have the family plugins for the specific um, translations that you're wanting to select. You will only be able to translate UI elements in the plugins that you have for that translation. In this case, I have a Spanish translation plugin already installed in my instance. So I would be able to translate my playbook into Spanish in this case. And that's the example we're gonna use today. But as you can see, there are many different options here for different translation options. You just need to make sure that you have that plugin configured. I'm gonna start off in Workflow Studio within a within a playbook itself. This one I have is just an opportunity management playbook. You can see that it has many stages, many different activities um, that we'll be able to translate today. The one thing I do wanna make sure though, is that whatever process that you choose is does need to be published and activated. So you can tell here if it's active. If it's not active yet, you will not see the translated um, UI elements in the process definition table. So that's just one thing to be aware of. This one is active, so I will be able to go ahead and come into process definitions. Um, again, this is just my process definition table. I can click into opportunity management here, and I can see now the translated messages tab. This will be installed once you upgrade to 27.1 um, and make sure that those system properties are turned on as, as we showed earlier. So you can see anything that I used as an activity label or as a description within the uh, playbook is, is keyed in here as a UI message or UI element. I'm gonna go ahead and just translate this use primary contact to schedule a demo option here. I'm gonna click into that. And what we wanna translate is this message here. So I'm gonna translate Spanish. And again, what you see in this dropdown is gonna be dictated by what you have installed in your application manager. I'm gonna go ahead and click Spanish. And then I am going to go ahead and paste in my translated message into the message section. And then I can go ahead and save that. 
once we come back to that opportunity management, I can see the Spanish version and the English version that will now be presented to the user when they go to open up that playbook in runtime. And then just a reminder, it's going to be set to whatever the user has in their system. So they must have Spanish as their session language in order to see the Spanish version. And the same thing goes for any other language that you translate UI elements into. All right, so what is next for translations? As you can see, we did have to go in and, and manually translate each of, the, each of those different uh, manual um, UI elements. So we do, are looking into automated translations in the future uh, to reduce the need to go in and manually translate. Um, we are going to be looking into translating data pills, developing a solution to make sure that anything within those data pills is also translated um, when make or when making all of the elements within the playbook localized. And then any user feedback that you have, please feel free to share it. We are looking for ways to continuously improve um, any feature, but especially this one today that we are presenting on. And thank you. I know you said you might have some questions. So Taylor, if I were a developer and I wanted to get started using um, the translations or the localization, um, where would I go for resources and how would I kind of get started using those? Yeah, we have lots of documentation within product documentation under playbooks. Um, so make sure that that's included in the show notes so that you can easily go back and reference a step-by-step -step screenshotted version of what I went through today in the demo. Excellent. Thank you. Well, that's all we have for this episode of Creator Toolbox, folks. We have so many episodes coming or already out that are our Yokohama features. So make sure that you check out our channel and like and subscribe so that you don't miss the next one. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for having me.